Hi everyone, this lesson will go over the essentials of predicting and writing acid-base neutralization equations. So in a acid-base neutralization, know that this is, strictly speaking, a double replacement reaction. In a double replacement reaction, two compounds as reactants will yield two other compounds. The cations, those uh, typically metal ions, will switch locations. The typically non-metal anions, which could be polyatomic ions, also switch places. For this particular type of double replacement reaction, you'll have an acid and base, both of which are aqueous, will react together to form an ionic compound, which is usually called classically a salt. And the other product will be liquid water. For the purposes of our um, pretty basic discussion here, all bases that we give you will be ionic compounds that contain hydroxide, which is the OH minus ion. For example, um, sodium hydroxide is the classic. Um, there's also barium hydroxide. Since Ba is a two plus charge, you'll need to have two hydroxides to cancel out that positive two charge. Another classic one is aluminum hydroxide. So you'll notice all of those bases that we're going to give you for this lesson will have hydroxide in it. And the other part of that base will be a metal cation of some kind. Okay, let's take a look at um, writing out the net ionic equation for acid-base neutralizations. Um, we'll have here hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. By the way, you can assume all acids and bases for our discussion will be aqueous. The other uh, compound, the base, is calcium hydroxide. Now, if you're not sure how to get this formula, just treat it like it's any other ionic compound, which, well, it is. Um, Ca is a 2 plus charge. Hydroxide is an OH minus charge, so you'll need two hydroxides. Therefore, the formula for calcium hydroxide will be Ca, open parentheses, OH2, and make sure to put an AQ on that as well, since the base is also aqueous. So I'm going to go ahead and start off my molecular equation by just copying these formulas down, since they are my reactants. Now, uh, we know that one of the products will be water, more on that in a minute. We also know the other product will be a salt, which is a ionic compound. We know that there is Ca2 plus coming from the base. We also see that there is a, a non-metal anion here. This is chloride. Chloride as an ion will have a negative one charge. So we're going to write the ionic compound formula containing calcium ion and chloride ion. So this means I will write this as CaCl2. And uh, make sure to put that Cl2 at the right of the formula, since that's the nonmetal anion part of it. You'll need two of those chlorides to cancel out the two plus charge. You may assume that the salt will be aqueous. So um, thinking back to the double replacement definition, right, uh, we have taken care of the calcium and the chloride. We know that they have gotten together. So the water results from the H plus from the acid getting together with the OH from the base. So just write the symbol for water, which is H2O. Um, which has the state L, since there is plenty of water present. Uh, but this represents extra water that has been formed as a result of this change. Now, you might be concerned at this point with the fact that there is a 2 subscript right here. Um, however, we're going to fix this by correcting this using coefficients to balance the equation. So um, I need to have two CLs on the reactant side. So I'm going to put a 2 coefficient here. Um, that'll balance, balance the CLs. Um, I also will have, um, I have two OHs here, but 2H and 2Hs from the CaOH2 means I have four Hs on the reactant side. I've got two on the product side, so I'm going to put a two coefficient for the water, and that's my molecular equation for this neutralization process. For the total ionic equation, recall that we're going to have to separate all of the AQ species. That's because the water rips the ions apart from each other. That means all the charges will come back. So let's take a look at this 2HCl situation. That's going to break up into 2H plus AQ. Again, the charges come back. 
plus 2Cl minus AQ. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions recently about why isn't it, um, say, um, H2 plus and Cl negative 2 um, written like that. Uh, the placement of the two is actually really important. In chemistry, that two subscript means the two H's are still chemically bonded together. Using the two subscript in front of the CL means the two CLs are chemically bonded together. Um, but we know that the behavior of water doesn't allow this to happen. Water literally separates ion from ion. It separates CL away from CL. So to represent the fact that the two CLs are separated, we write that two as coefficients, not as a subscript. So uh, let's do the same thing for the CaOH2. We know that the Ca is a two plus charge. You can write AQ. Um, that two subscript will now become a coefficient for the same reason that I just discussed with the Cl minus before. Um, so that's my uh, reactant side. For my product side, I'm going to rip apart the CaCl2. So Ca2 plus AQ. Um, and again, with the Cl2, I'm going to make that to be a coefficient and make the charge appear again on the chloride. Now for the water, um, this is brand new water, so I'm going to write this out. I will not separate it. I will not do any funny business. Just copy the 2H2O liquid. So that's my total ionic equation. Um, now, um, as I taught you in class, there are, um, there's, well, let's see, um, there are two ions here that are spectators. These are ions that actually have not participated in any changes. They were a certain way before the reaction. They are still the same after the reaction. So those two spectators are actually your chlorides, right? Um, the other spectator ion is the Ca2+. So just know before I change um, this writing a little bit that the chloride and the Ca2+, do not disappear. I am crossing them out, but they are still present in the beaker. They're just not participating in forming water. So that being said, um, I am going to strike these out as if they're disappearing, but they're not really disappearing. Um, so no, you're, you have two spectators here. Uh, you have Cl minus and your other spectator is two, uh, Ca2 plus. So the net ionic equation illustrates only the chemical changes that are happening, which is the uh, two hydrogen ions combining with two hydroxide ions to form a brand new chemical substance, which is brand new water. Before we leave this net ionic equation, do make sure that your coefficients are reduced down to their low, lowest possible form. So I'm actually going to take my eraser here and I'm going to erase the twos because I know two, two, and two reduce down to one, one, and one. Uh, so actually the acid base neutralization net ionic equation is always, at least for our purposes, um, going to be this equation right here, which makes predicting acid base neutralization pretty easy. All right, one more example for you. Um, this is sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide reacting together. Um, sulfuric acid is a ternary acid. Um, this is an acid based upon a polyatomic ion, in this case, sulfate. I know it's sulfate because IC and 8 are matched together. If you ate something gross, you might feel icky. So sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Acids always have at least one H plus involved. You have to cancel out the two negative charge. So sulfuric acid as a formula is H2, whoops, H2 SO4. You may assume that everything here except for the water will be AQ. Now let's deal with the sodium hydroxide. Here's Na plus, hydroxide is OH minus. This is a one-to-one -one ratio between cations and anions. Put an AQ here. We know that this is an acid-base neutralization, so one of the products will be water. The other will be this salt. Um, by the way, if you take a look at it, here's where your water comes from, right? It's H and OH coming together. The salt is when the sodium gets together with sulfate. Write the sodium first. Uh, metals are always written first. 
um, in ionic compounds. If you think about it, we have a last name, we have a first name and a last name convention, right? In our society. So we have Na2SO4. We're going to say this is AQ. And then write your liquid water last. Again, this is brand new water. This is not water that was present before. This is brand new water that has appeared seemingly out of nowhere because the H pluses from the acid are now getting together with the OHs from the sodium hydroxide. I'm going to go ahead and balance this. Um, I see my um, H's are not working for me. Um, but I know that I need to have two NAs on the reactant side. So I'm going to put a big two right here for my coefficient. Um, and to balance out my resulting H's, I'm going to have to put a two as a coefficient for the water. So there's my molecular equation. Uh, let's break up all of our aqueous species into ions. So um, I noticed that there is an H2SO4. There are two H's make the two appear as a coefficient, not as a subscript. The ion charge comes back, so make sure that the plus appears there. We're gonna put SO4, which is, has a two minus charge. Um, now I have my two NaOH. I'm going to separate this out into ions, two Na plus AQ and two OH minus AQ. On the right-hand side, my salt will also separate. Again, make that subscript of two become a coefficient and make that charge come back. So that's two Na plus. And my sulfate comes back with its charge. However, that brand new water represents a brand new product with brand new properties. So I'm gonna copy that to H2O liquid. All right, as before, I'm sure you've noticed that there are two spectators. That would be your SO4 as well as your Na+. Again, they have not really disappeared, but we are making them disappear from the equation because they don't actually participate in the chemical change happening. So my two spectators are Na+, and SO4, 2 minus. So I'm going to copy all of the remaining species down as part of my net ionic equation because they're actually the ions that participate in anything chemical. So here is my brand new water that's been formed. Um, again, I see my coefficients are two, two, and two. We need to uh, reduce these down to their lowest possible form. So I'm gonna sit with my eraser, make this a bigger eraser um, and scratch this out. So my coefficients are now one, one, and one. Again, you see this uh, stereotyped formation of water. Therefore, the net ionic equation for acid-base neutralization is always, um, for our purposes anyway, um, going to be H plus, H plus plus OH minus yielding um, H2O liquid. Um, so I hope this super quick screencast helps you out with uh, practice problems involving acid-base neutralization prediction. Thank you and have a great day.